Hi, and welcome to our video of a visit to West Malling in Kent. And while you might want to check it out, I will include some of the history of the town and the surrounding area. So where are we? Well, of course we're in the glorious county of Kent, in the southeast corner of England. And in this video we'll be looking at the old town, as well as taking a peek at Kings Hill for reasons I will explain a little later. We're served by a mainline railway station, as well as being close to Junction 4 of the M20. And we're going to head north, south, east and west in the old town to unearth its secrets. So without further ado, let's go and explore West Morling. And I'm going to start as if we arrive by train, heading up Swan Street, picking up snippets of the Cascades, St Mary's Abbey, before arriving at the High Street. And here we are, about five minutes after leaving the station, at the eastern end of Swan Street. And it won't be long before you come across the Cascades, a water feature that runs through St Mary's Abbey, and then disappears underground. There's some confusion when this feature was added. There's a plaque that says 1810, but then there's also a picture attributed to J.M.W. Turner, dated 1791 to 1792, that includes the feature. So, it remains a mystery. And following the path of water leads us to these two cute little fellas, along Frog Lane. And it's great to wander off. Sometimes you just feel like you step back in time. And now back on Swan Street, you meet the period architecture, including the Abbey Brewery House and in the distance, Went House. The former brewery has now been turned into luxury homes. On the opposite side of Swan Street, is St Mary's Abbey, home to an order of Benedictine nuns. It dates from around about the 11th century, but it's not open to the general public. And by now you may have noticed a blue plaque or two. There is a blue plaque trail, and I'll put that in the description below. You'll notice there's a slight walk uphill towards the high street, but you are treated to some beautiful 18th century architecture. Our next little bijou detour is along the quaintly named Police Station Road. In fact, as I head down here, I can almost imagine a policeman, a Bobby, with his helmet on, exchanging pleasantries as he passes. And the reason I created this video of West Morning is it's a great place to stay. Like said, Leonard's here where you can also eat well. Then just a few steps up the street, there's the Swan, another great place for casual dining. In fact, West Morning has something for every budget. As we reach the top of the high street, we're gonna turn right or head north picking up the Statue of Hope and heading towards Tower Hill and then back towards King Street. If you've arrived by car either from the M20 or A20 then you'll be following the blue routes. Street is a traditional high street but once again you'll find plenty of places to get fed and watered. It's also a quirky side to West Morley. I'm not quite sure what this is. And now we reach the Statue of Hope by Sarah Cunningham. Unveiled in 2001, the cloak of the figure depicts scenes from West Morning's history. And now a shout out to Pad Thai, a wonderful Thai restaurant in the Half Timber building in front of us. Did I mention we only live about five miles away from here, so we're familiar with the area. If you're visiting by car at the weekend, the car park to our left is free of charge. However, during the week, unfortunately it's a pan display in the centre of town. And this beautiful building, Morning House, I can find very little about 
If you know anything, then drop us a comment below. But now it's time to wander back and explore from King Street, up West Street, around the old county ground, before heading back up the High Street towards St Mary's Church. Now I love King Street. It may only be 240 metres in length, but it's packed full of beautiful historic buildings. Unfortunately, we chose to capture it on bin day. How about this? A traditional garage that specialises in Morris Miners amongst other things. We now head up West Street to take in another little bit of history. You'll find the Town Mauling Cricket Club and the Old County Ground. The first recorded place in Kent that cricket was played back in 1705. Now I'm not a huge fan of cricket but it's a little bit of history, so worth mentioning. And back to the high street. Now is that a mini moak I see before me? This place is full of surprises. But it has everything you need. Just out shot to the left is the Tesco's. And then there's a few more interesting places. Places to get fed and watered. And just behind this parade of shops, it's the town's pay and display car park. There is time limited free parking on the high street, but it's rather scarce. And now we reach the end of the high street and the church of St. Mary the Virgin. And opposite is the beautiful church house. And as you probably already know, Janice loves to look around a good graveyard, so guess what? Off we go, we're going to have a look around. And now it's time to jump in the car and head out of West Morning towards St Leonard's Tower before heading on to Kings Hill, which between 1939 and 1967 was RAF Westmoreland. Deuce's Manor is now a management training centre, but during the Second World War, it was the RAF officers' quarters. Just a short walk from here is St Leonard's Tower, a very early Norman structure, which not a lot's known about, but I will pop a link in the description below to the English Heritage Site, which may give you some more details. Now a quick look at the Manor Park Country Park, which does have a cafe, numerous walks and a chargeable car park. We're going to just take a short stroll around the lake and then Hey, look, cute little ducks. Where would a video be without cute little ducks? And now on to Kings Hill, a reasonably modern housing development, which was once RAF West Morning, and the Shepherd Neen pub in the centre. Well, it had to be, didn't it? And there's plenty of reminders of its past, including the Running Airman Memorial, dedicated to those who defended the skies over the southeast of England during the Second World War. And then the beautiful Art Deco control tower, which now houses the cultural centre. And now a few words we all know to describe the effort that went on here. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. And that brings this video to a close. Once again, I hope you like what we put together. Stay safe, stay well, and I guess for me, it's a tally-ho.